presentation so yes can you all see my screen yes thank you fantastic i i don't <laughs> ah i'll clear you don't no uh oh uh, maybe give it a second to load okay Is it showing up, Al Khalil? Yeah, it's it's loading. It's loading. Yeah, Fantastic. now I see. Yeah, Fantastic. thank you very much. Thanks Great. a lot. Okay, uh, thank you very much, and uh, hi to everybody. Good morning to you on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, and uh, good afternoon for those who are in West Africa. Um, this is about uh, we're talking. We'll be talking to you about El Nino and its implications for acute food insecurity in West Africa. Uh, next, uh, please. Next slide. Um, uh, Phil, are you going to do it? Okay, the introduction is just uh, uh, Phil, Phil did it. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, the, we'll be presenting myself and uh, Anu. Um, next, please. Okay, uh, first, I will uh, probably talk, I will talk to you about the, the, the two first point of this outline, uh, and that's uh, about El Nino 2023 20, 20, 20, and uh, its impacts. Uh, in West Africa in general and for this season. Uh, and uh, my colleague Anu will be talking to you about uh, the food security implications in West Africa. Next, please. Okay, uh, uh, before starting, we need to acknowledge those colleagues who really uh, put uh, most of this uh, presentation together. Uh, it's, it's hard work and uh, thanks uh, to all of them. Um, Andrew Heil, Laura Harrison, Weston Anderson, Tamuka Magadjire, and Benjamin Davis. Thank you. Next, please. Okay, uh, here is an overview um, about uh, what we are talking about, El Nino Southern Oscillation. And it's a naturally occurring uh, event arising from tropical atmosphere ocean relationship. Uh, we'll talk about its characteristic, uh, its identifiable features, uh, which include, include intensity and uh, flavor. We'll come back to it. And then uh, we'll talk about the forecast for the rest of the season and probably into next year. Thank you. Uh, so it's, uh, it's now a uh, strong ongoing El Nino, please. Uh, uh, from late September on, uh, uh, it's going all the way to early next, uh, next year. It's going to be a strong El Nino. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. Next, please. Uh, the answer neutral. These are the three phases of uh, El Nino, and that's the answer neutral. And as you could see, the, uh, the, the, the trade winds um, on the Eastern Pacific, and uh, you could uh, clearly see that uh, the temperature is, uh, uh, the SST temperature actually, the, the, the color shades, uh, blue shades are cooler than uh, normal. I mean, uh, and, and uh, 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 red or uh, red shades are, are warmer. And you could see that, like in the uh, Eastern Pacific, uh, for Enso Neutral, uh, it's a descending air. It's, uh, 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 so it's, uh, it's hampering the, the formation of clouds, uh, the, the convection, and therefore uh, it's drier. But on the uh, Western side, you see uh, uh, uprising air and uh, uh, deep uh, convections and the formation of clouds, and therefore rainfall in the, over the maritime uh, continent. Next, Next please. Uh, this is now La Nina, and as you can see, this, the trade winds are going to yeah, get stronger and putting more stress on uh, uh, the sea surface, uh, pushing uh, warm air on the uh, western side of the Pacific and uh, pulling the thermocline up, and uh, so therefore cold air. So you have a cooler uh, part in, in, the, in this eastern Paci uh, Pacific, and uh, 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 warmer uh, on the other side of the Pacific. Uh, next, please. Uh, here now, uh, uh, and this is that was La Nia, the second one. Uh, so, for, uh, for some reason, uh, there is a reset, and uh, the, the ocean temperature, I mean, we're still talking about the Pacific Ocean, they all become warmer than average, and then it is an El Nino, and as you can see, it's practically contrary to what happened in Nina, in La Nina, 
uh, rising air is now uh, sinking and the sinking air on uh, over Lania, the second uh, uh, picture is now uh, uh, rising and uh, don't, therefore giving to uh, cloud formation and, and, and a lot of rains in this part of, of, of the, the, the world. And uh, the other one is, is drier because it's preventing uh, air, air rising, uh, rising air and uh, therefore uh, it's, uh, it's drier and uh, uh, higher pressure. Okay, thank you. Next, please. Okay, these are the related uh, uh, consequences. Uh, so this uh, also uh, changes in temperature and wind patterns. Uh, uh, they are in the Pacific Ocean, but they have global effects. And that you can see uh, on the left side, you see like in the uh, over the Caribbean, the, the tropical Atlantic, you have uh, uh, motion air. And these are neutral conditions actually. And in the middle, you have the Pacific walk circulation. Uh, you have the Eastern Pacific uh, sinking air motion, therefore uh, um, um, no clouds. And uh, uh, on the other side, the, uh, over the continental mar maritime continent, uh, it's rising air. And uh, this is a, a small cell here uh, between the uh, Western uh, Indian Ocean and Eastern Africa. Uh, so over the continent, there is uh, some limited uh, enhancement of, of, uh, of rising air in the cloud formation, but it's drier uh, uh, in the, this uh, 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 Western uh, Indian Ocean. Um, next, please. Yeah, so these are now La Nina conditions. And uh, as you could see, uh, uh, now the small cell that I just talked about uh, uh, just disappeared, but giving uh, 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 making place to, to this uh, sinking air motion, and therefore it's uh, uh, drier conditions. Um, but on the other side, on this uh, 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 over the uh, maritime continent, it's a uh, uh, rising air, a uh, lot of deep convection, and a lot of rains in this area, and also in the eastern Pacific, uh, sinking air uh, motion, and it's uh, drier conditions. And on the uh, other side of the uh, Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic, it's also uh, enhanced convection, uh, rising air, and giving place to uh, uh, deep convection, uh, deep convection, and a lot of uh, uh, rainfall. The next, please. Okay, here are uh, El Nino conditions, and uh, if you could see, it's exactly the contrary of, uh, of the previous picture, uh, where we had. Uh, uh, rising air now it's sinking air and uh, vice versa and now we have a lot of uh, uh, rain in the eastern pacific and uh, over eastern africa but then uh, dry conditions over the maritime continent as well as the, the caribbean and the eastern pacific uh, area yeah next please yeah so now uh, let's uh, see about uh, what what are the characteristics and uh, uh, the the, the, the uh, intensity and the flavor here we have here uh, three examples uh, in which one in which uh, we have uh, like a very uh, 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 i mean large departure uh, positive departure from the uh, from average we have here very small departure and we have here sort of moderate departure Next, please. So these are this uh, uh, reflects the condition that we uh, uh, that uh, were experienced in 1997, 1998. Uh, that's uh, uh, one, and uh, the middle one is 2004, 2005, and uh, the right hand side is 2009, 2010. And this uh, uh, actually next, please. Uh, these are, uh, as you can see, this is the very, uh, uh, no, the, the previous one, please. Uh, I haven't finished. Okay. So the strong uh, uh, left hand side, and uh, uh, it's in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, the intensity here for the middle is weak, as you can see from the, the color shade. And it's, uh, it's also in the Central Pacific. Uh, uh, it's in the Central Pacific. And uh, the left, the right hand side is the moderate. As you can see, also from the shade, and it's in the Eastern Pacific. Next, please. Next, next, please. Yeah. Okay. How now uh, is the ESO measured? 
the sea surface temperature is calculated, I mean, the, the departure from average is calculated in this area. Uh, uh, this is a, a new area. And uh, this is a, a, a monthly SST anomaly, uh, uh, 2000 from, uh, uh, I mean, 20, 21 August 2022 to 17 of, uh, September 2022. Uh, next, please. Next, please. So you can see the previous picture, the shade is blue here, but here now it's red. So this is now a different one. And it's uh, 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 the previous is La Nina and this is El Nino, the same uh, place, same rectangle uh, in the map. And this is for June uh, 2015, the temperature normal. Uh, next, please. Uh, uh, again, um, this area, as you could see, uh, it's it's been monitored for a long time, and uh, uh, and you could see that uh, uh, it has been evolving. Sometimes you have uh, uh, above average uh, sea surface temperature, and sometimes below when it's above average. After a certain uh, threshold, it's a uh, it's a Nino, and uh, when it's below average, also after a th certain threshold, it's a uh, it's a La Nina, and that's you could see uh, the events of El Nino and La Nina. Uh, uh, succeeding, I mean, uh, 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 one after the other uh, from 1982 to uh, January 2022. Uh, next, please. Okay, now, uh, as I said, uh, over a threshold, that these are the threshold uh, between minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. And uh, within this uh, threshold, uh, it's considered uh, neutral conditions. And anything above, uh, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah. So anything above you, as you, you have uh, for for El Nino, you have weak El Nino from zero five to one, and the moderate El Nino from one to one point five, and uh, above one point five is considered as strong El Nino. Uh, next, please. Uh, okay. Uh, now uh, we're going to see about. Uh, I mean, talk about the forecast for for the season. Um, uh, what what do we expect? And uh, it's expected that we'll have a strong El Nino from late September uh, 2023 through early 2024. Next, please. Okay, uh, as you could say, as, uh, as I just said, uh, 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 we have here the the, the probability, um, uh, uh, the forecast probabilities are like like 100 percent, 99 percent from uh, uh, August uh, to October, to September, November, October, December, and uh, all the way to November, January, it's uh, like 99% of, uh, of El Nino. And uh, then we have uh, still very strong, uh, I mean, very high probabilities of El Nino all the way to March and May of next year. Next, please. Uh, okay, these are now the probability of having uh, a strong El Nino, uh, moderate or and or weak. And uh, as we can see, uh, from uh, August, to, I mean from September to November, uh, the forecast indicates the forecast indicates um, above fifty percent of strong El Nino. And uh, it goes all the way to above 60% for the October, December uh, uh, period. And the, maintaining, I mean, the same uh, high probability of having a strong El Nino all the way to November, January, and then decreasing a bit, but still above 50% for the December, February, and then coming down uh, 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 strong El Nino probability uh, all the way to uh, March, May. Uh, of, of next year. Uh, next, please. Okay, and this is a uh, uh, El Nino. Uh, uh, it's likely this shows us the the, the forecast, um, the experimental probabilistic uh, forecast, and uh, that you see you could see is uh, very high for to be uh, the high precise uh, probability all the way to. Uh, January, February, uh, uh, I don't feel well. Mm. Uh, all the way to, to here, anyway, 
uh, to next year. And uh, uh, yeah, I actually I don't see I don't read it quite well because it's small. But uh, uh, okay, it says it's medium. Okay, I increase it a, a little bit. So uh, that's the December, December, January, February, uh, 2024. Yeah, okay. Uh, so basically what it says that uh, uh, El Nino must legally uh, to end by mid-2024, uh, because last, we, we see that uh, the probability of uh, having uh, uh, the SSC departure um, in the lower tercile is, uh, and uh, in the middle tercile are increasing. And uh, the probability of having this SST uh, departure uh, over, the, I mean, in, in the upper tercile are, are decreasing, and therefore it's expected to end by maybe mid, mid 2024. Thank you. Next, please. So uh, let's uh, talk about uh, see the El Nino contact uh, impacts, pardon me, for the current season uh, precipitations. Uh, next, please. Uh, so uh, uh, El Nino is uh, uh, generally expected to to have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, as a, an impact uh, over the Sahel uh, dryness from uh, Chad, uh, uh, including northeastern Nigeria and uh, uh, north northern Nigeria, uh, Niger, and uh, all the way to uh, eastern Mali and the part of Burkina Faso, where conditions are <coughs> expected to be drier during. Uh, El Nino, uh, El Nino years. Thank you. Next, please. Uh, here we've uh, calculated the June, July, August, September rainfall anomaly in percent of average uh, during the past El Nino uh, events since 1981. And uh, as you could see, uh, we never have uh, things that look alike uh, um, in 1981. There is a uh, some uh, sort of uh, moderate uh, deficits in this area, uh, in part of Burkina uh, and Mali, uh, in here uh, Senegal, Mauritania, and part of of the pastoral area of Chad. But in 1987 it was it was seriously. Uh, I mean, all this part has like uh, severe um, uh, uh, severe deficits in this area for the seasonal rainfall as well as in this area. Um, but as you could see, Senegal and this part of Mauritania are actually above average. Um, and even uh, a good part of Burkina Faso, um, Southern Mali and so on. Um, even in Chad, most of Chad uh, uh, average to above average. Um, but in 1991, you see that Senegal, which was in 1987, uh, I mean, above average, now it's really has a very serious, uh, I mean, uh, severe deficit. Whereas it was the rest of the Sahel, it's above average. And so basically, uh, no things that uh, really look like, uh, what I want to maybe say is that uh, for 2015, uh, this is a strong El Nino uh, year, but uh, practically the Sahel part is, is really uh, uh, above average uh, rainfall. So. Uh, next, please. <clears throat> okay, um, <clears throat> we've also um, calculated the June, July, August, September rainfall anomaly uh, uh, percent of average during the past El Nino events. Uh, ag again, and uh, on the left uh, hand side, you have the weekend to moderate, moderate El Nino analog years. Uh, this is what is expected in uh, average. And on the right hand side, you have the uh, strong El Nino uh, analog years. And again, amazing, uh, we expect a uh, strong El Nino to, to have a, a stronger effect, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, more severe uh, dryness, but uh, uh, it's the weak and moderate El Nino that uh, basically produces this, uh, this uh, uh, <clears throat> moderate dryness uh, or weak, uh, I mean, moderate dryness in the Sahel, but uh, strong El Nino actually in many parts, uh, it's uh, above average. You take it from Senegal all the way to this part of Niger uh, and even most of Northern Nigeria, but on the Eastern, Eastern Niger, 
and uh, part of the pastoral area of, of Chad that really uh, can uh, suffer from from severe uh, uh, rainfall uh, uh, deficits. Uh, next, please. Okay, uh, we uh, like also to talk about uh, the regional and local climate drivers. Uh, and uh, uh, this the most uh, prominent one is the uh, the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, the AMO. And that you could see uh, this is from several decades it remains. Uh, uh, and that's about the average uh, temperature over the North, North, North Atlantic uh, Ocean. Uh, so you see some for 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 some for some years for decades for decades for, uh, it remains for decades it remains uh, below average and for decades it remains above average and now we are in this uh, above average uh, uh, area and uh, as you can see above average um, that's when the northern Atlantic is warmer uh, we expect wet conditions in West Africa and vice versa and when it is cooler then we expect drier than uh, normal conditions in West Africa. Next, please. Okay, so this is for the current season. This is what uh, the total amount of rainfall for this uh, period, June, July, August, September, uh, 2023, and it's anomaly in terms of percent of average. And as you can see, uh, there are uh, tiny areas like here, uh, Eastern, uh, northeastern Nigeria, uh, this part like uh, eastern uh, Zinder region and uh, 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 and here uh, and around Tau region, where you have a, a moderate deficit, uh, including also this part of uh, uh, southern uh, southeastern uh, 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 which is the, this uh, wilaya in 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 Mauritania and. Uh, this part of uh, south western part of Tombuktu. Uh, so you have also in this area. But almost, uh, the rest of the Sahel uh, conditions are either average or above uh, average for the whole season. Now let's see uh, um, um, what uh, uh, month month by month uh, in the next slide what what we have received. Please next. Okay, and these are the. The combination of the cold, I mean, uh, consecutive dry days, that is the, the, the length of dry, uh, the dry spells uh, during the month, and also the, the deficit, which are categorized either severe, uh, moderate, or, or um, uh, severe and moderate. Yeah. Uh, so um, we have for May, uh, there is no problem because the season uh, is still uh, starting in the southern part, in the uh, Sudanian Guinean zone. Um, but as we move into June, then uh, uh, the IT, ITF or ITCZ reaches the Sahelian uh, uh, agroecological zone. And as you could see in this part of Burkina uh, and north uh, western Nigeria, there is some uh, uh, severe deficit but no really dry spell and they for this month in the sahel uh dry spells and uh, as well as really um uh, deficits don't really count but it's from july on then it becomes serious because uh, there's only uh three months left for the season to end and uh, uh so but here uh, you see in july in this part of mali there is severe deficit um but you don't have uh, uh much of uh uh, consecutive dry days, uh, no dry spells during the month of July, uh, except in these very tiny areas. Uh, uh, so there are two zones here, south uh, western Burkina, this part of south uh, eastern Mali, and northeastern Nigeria. Uh, in, actually, in northeastern Nigeria, you also have some uh, um, uh, uh, dry spells that are between eight and ten days. Um, but it's, it's severe that uh, that put, put a delay in the sowing and the planting, and that that, that could be at the end uh, detrimental to to yield because uh, most of the crop, particularly the cereal crops, are photoperiod sensitive, and therefore in July, if they, if you don't sow in July, then it's, uh, you either has to have to to uh, switch to a, a, 
the shorter cycle uh, variety, shorter cycle crop or, or you could face uh, um, a significant drop in yields. Uh, for August, uh, it's fine. August is uh, normally the rainiest month. However, here in Chad, we have also some uh, severe dryness, uh, severe uh, deficits, as well on this part of uh, uh, Zender and, and uh, Maradi regions in, in, in Niger. Uh, and for September, uh, uh, it's expected again severe dryness, um, um, severe deficits. And this, uh, so for the area where we have in July, uh, uh, severe deficits, like uh, here, this part of Mali and uh, uh, the south, northeastern Nigeria, then we really expect that uh, uh, the yield will be low in this uh, part uh, of the of the region. Um, so this is uh, the next please. Uh, so this is basically uh, a summary of uh, what we've just seen for the for the uh, region for West Africa. Uh, the monthly anomaly and CCD. Uh, so in July, southern Mali, south southwestern Burkina and northeastern Nigeria, uh, southeastern Niger areas have really uh, uh, um, uh, had severe rainfall deficit. Uh, in August, uh, there is Maradi and Zender regions in Niger, extreme extreme northeastern Nigeria, far north Cameroon, Hajar Lamis region in Chad, uh, that's extending from far north Cameroon. To Hajar Lamis in, in region in Chad, and in August uh, parts of Hol Garbi, uh, actually it's Hol Sherbi. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, Asaba. Uh, no, Hol Garbi is Asaba and Brakna in southern Mauritania, Saint Louis region in northern Senegal, and the extreme north southwestern part of Tombuktu region in Mali suffer from long dry spells and or rainfall deficits. And for uh, in the first four quintiles of, of September. Most of the Sahelian zone uh, is under severe rainfall deficits. Uh, thank you. And uh, next, please. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, look at uh, uh, this uh, uh, the water requirement satisfaction index. Uh, this is uh, something that is uh, uh, close to to yield, and. Uh, as, as you could see, uh, the region that you mentioned uh, uh, may have uh, problems. And uh, this is uh, um, um, for like uh, southern, uh, this part of Mali and northeastern Nigeria. Uh, you see, this is the extended, this is all the way to the second decade of, of September. Uh, what happened? Sorry, Alquil. Can you hear me? I can, Anu, but I'm not sure that Al Khalil can hear us. Thanks, Vanessa. Um, maybe we'll just give him a second to reconnect. That sounds good. Yeah, it does look like he just dropped. So I think if we give him a minute, he should be able to come back on. Uh, do you hear me now? We do. Thank you, Alcleo. OK, sorry for no. Okay, I was uh, say commenting like this uh, uh, water requirement satisfaction index. Uh, it's uh, uh, for for uh, the, the crop and the range. This is for the crop, and uh, uh, the bottom one is for range, and uh, one is for RFE, and the other for uh, um, um, chips. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, show that, uh, like for the crops, we see that uh, uh, the Malian part for the current and the extended. Uh, as well as northeastern part, like uh, we have some mediocre uh, result, and so uh, therefore I think a uh, um, uh, drop in yield, significant drop in yields are expected 
uh, even in this part of Niger, the Western Niger. Um, for the ranch, I think uh, it's uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, we don't have really uh, uh, any problem because uh, um, uh, it, 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 it's it's good. It's raining and. Uh, we still have some clouds here. We still uh, yesterday it was a rainfall event in, here in Miami. That means uh, the ITF is still uh, far up, and uh, some rainfall is expected. So this part is going to be uh, good, no problem. Uh, next, please. Okay. So these are the same. I think the previous are for the uh, for the chips, and these are for the RFE, and uh, we still the same area uh northeastern nigeria and so on um uh, and uh, this part of mali um uh northern part of kayan and uh, part of Segu, and uh, this is the northern part of uh, ulikuru uh, we still have uh, problems here in this area and also in northeastern nigeria that it's coming over and over in this part of Niger, for as far as crops are concerned but um the uh, the um, range uh, WRSI is, is also quite good, at the exception of this area in uh, northern Difa. But this area uh, uh, there, the the livestock doesn't stay for long, uh, so it's uh, as long as the south southern area are good, uh, there is no problem. Um, yeah, so it's in general it's showing that. Uh, Beside uh, for the crops for this part of Mali and uh, this part of uh, and, uh, Niger here, northern Tinaberi and uh, northeastern Nigeria, um, uh, everything else looks uh, looks fine, uh, both in terms of crops and as well as um, um, range. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next, please. Okay, uh, it's also uh, notes that uh, this year is uh, is really a kind of a warm year, and uh, 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 um, it says no previous strong El Nino has developed under such warm conditions. So, what are going to be the uh, uh, expected uh, consequences on this? Uh, so, let's move to the next please. Next slide. Okay. Uh, when uh, when it is warm, uh, uh, we are uh, what we care about is, is the, the 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 atmospheric demands in terms of uh, evaporation, uh, evapotranspiration increases, and see if we have some uh, low low parts that uh, show low lower ET uh, anomaly. I mean lower ET or negative ET anomalies, and uh, when we see this. Uh, also, generally, the Sahel, uh, we're doing fine, uh, despite that uh, this is a very, um, um, very warm uh, year uh, uh, combined with El Nino. Um, but we see again uh, here the northeastern part of, of Niger. Um, and uh, uh, this part of Maradi, northern Maradi, and uh, northwestern. Uh, uh nigeria uh on this part probably is uh between uh uh Tilaberi and uh, walam and uh, uh i mean uh, Tilaberi region and the uh, power region as well as in this area of uh, 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 uh south eastern part of our um uh, and uh, this part of northern kulikoro we have uh some maybe uh, uh area that uh, where or we may uh, have uh, moisture problems, but uh, in general, also we have uh, more green than than anything else uh, with the whole uh, region. Particularly, we are looking at the Sahel with uh, with a focus because it's the most sensitive area to to dryness to dry. Thank you. Next, please. So, uh, so that's uh, uh, for the crop yield forecast. Um, this is a uh, uh, typical crop uh, yield outcomes for a new year, and uh, we're looking for um, uh, maybe slight uh, drop in Nigeria uh, for maize, uh, as well as in Cameroon. Um, uh, also, uh, anything between seven seven point five to two point five. Uh, uh, 
uh, in, in uh, Benin and uh, Senegal. Uh, uh, so, but uh, also the slide drop is sort of from uh, zero uh, to 2.5 uh, includes also um, Ghana. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, this is uh, about it. And, uh, next please. Yeah, this is also about the uh, uh, maize uh, yield, and it's an El Nino mean percent yield anomaly for El Nino years. Um, uh, so you, you have a, a for, for, again, for Nigeria, uh, slightly uh, close to 0%. I mean, uh, um, with Ghana, slight uh, drop as well as Cameroon. And uh, for Burkina Faso, uh, we have uh, like uh, slightly above above average. It's the fractional maize yield anomalies during a news. Okay, uh, next please. Um, this is uh, also it's still about the maize yields. The, the, the upper one is uh, the one that we've just uh, uh, I mean, talked about. And the bottom one is uh, the fractional maize yield anomalies during a new uh, uh, as measured by the fraction of a new years in which the sign of the yield anomaly agrees with that of the mean yield anomaly. And the areas that are shaded green indicate that more than 60% of the new years have a yield anomaly consistent with the mean. Uh, so you see that. Uh, uh, we have uh, um, um, in West Africa. We have uh, uh, really um, uh, we don't have uh, this says above sixty percent. Um, so uh, it's uh, it's it's fine. That means uh, there's no strong relationship with uh, with uh, these countries and uh, the region country and the Nino. Uh, uh, May yield. Um, thank you. Next, please. Okay, uh, I think my colleague uh, uh, Anu will be presenting the acute food insecurity implications. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> thank you so much, Al Khalil. Um, sure. So, as Al Khalil has explained, historically, the impacts of El Nino on both rainfall and crop production in West Africa has been relatively inconsistent, but the impact of the 2023-24 El Nino is expected to be minimal at this point. Um, as such, so FuseNet anticipates El Nino's impact on acute food insecurity to also be minimal. So through the next few slides, I wanna run through the timing of the strong El Nino in relation to seasonal calendar years and drive further into the crop um, production estimates from what Al Khalil mentioned uh, just a minute ago. And then lastly, I will run through the key drivers of acute food insecurity outcomes in West Africa, um, which predominantly actually remain conflict and poor macroeconomic conditions rather than um, El Nino or weather related events. Uh, so first taking a look at the seasonal calendar will help us kind of contextualize the timing of El Nino in relation to key cultivation and harvest periods in the region. In the northern regions, so that top portion of the calendar, um, the rainy season and main growing season run from roughly June to August, which in this past year or the year we're in coincided with the weak to moderate El Nino in 2023. As Al Khalil then explained, the El Nino had um, minimal impact on crop development essentially this year. Then our main harvest period generally spans from September to January, followed by the off-season harvest from January through April. And the harvest periods this year and early next year coincide with the strong El Nino, which is forecasted to continue through early January. And during this period, we would not be expecting to see crop growth. So no impact on crop development during the strong El Nino. 
And then, um, as again, he explained, the El Nino is expected to dissipate prior to the onset of the 2024 rainy season next June to start the cycle over again um, next year. Then to quickly look at the southern portion of the calendar, while the strong El Nino, sorry, does coincide with that second rainy season over southern parts of the reg region from November to January, particularly that would cover southern Nigeria and southern Cameroon. We do not expect um, El Nino to have an impact on rainfall in those areas for the second season and cultivation during that time um, contributes only really minimally to annual production in those countries. Um, so also given Al Khalil already kind of discussed seasonal rainfall patterns, I'll keep this brief. But just taking a quick look at CHIRP's rainfall performance during cultivation, um, rainfall was broadly near average in the Sahel from May to August um, with some ice like deficits that he was discussing, um, particularly in June. So it it's worth noting from a crop production perspective that several areas saw a delayed start to the rainy season <clears throat> in June and some poorly distributed rainfall and localized deficits in June and July, which led to delays in crop development in several areas. So um, this was largely kind of rebounded in August from um, improved rainfall, but ultimately we are expected to see um, uh, some delayed in harvest in Southern Mali, Eastern Burkina Faso, Southern Niger and parts of North Central and Northeast Nigeria. Moving on now to the uh, 2023 crop production at the regional level. So Al Khalil just discussed a little bit the general El Nino trends for, um, for crop production, but turning to the actual estimates, um, the graph on the left so shows the Prajek provisional crop estimates. Um, You'll see that for all of the West Africa um, FuseNet monitored countries, except for Cameroon, given Cameroon does not participate in Prajac. But as you can see, these estimates are consistently either near average or slightly above average in some cases, otherwise some below average um, for the 23-24 main season cultivation. Um, but I'll point out for Nigeria, while Prajek reports that the 22-23 crop production was actually above average, FuseNet's analysis actually suggests the 22-23, so last year's production season, was considerably below average due to um, more severe flooding last year. And so while we anticipate this upcoming harvest in 23-24 to also be below average overall, we do expect it to be improved relative to last year, given the relatively minor floods we're seeing so far um, this year or this season. Now, turning to the crop conditions map on the right, the GeoGlam map, um, this shows regional cropping conditions and um, essentially the main drivers for poor production in the region. And as you can see, the little men or people with guns, which is kind of hard to see in the graphic. Um, the primary factor constraining agriculture production in, in the Sahel remains relatively consistently conflict. And then we're seeing some areas of particularly northern Nigeria, but as I think many of you are aware, across much of West Africa, we're seeing economic factors such as persisting high input, um, high agriculture input prices also um limiting production in some areas overall though fusenet has anticipated crop production deficits in those conflict affected areas in the 23-24 main season so turning to the acute food insecurity outcomes for october as we've been reiterating through this presentation um, weather shocks can certainly be a driver of of food insecurity and as as um I'm sure you've heard in, in multiple other regions, this can be the case or this is the case, but we are not seeing these impacts from El Nino in West Africa for this year. And the conflict remains the primary driver of food insecurity across the region. Um, so now just to point out a few areas. So Burkina Faso remains one of the highest concerns, not just 
for West Africa, but among FuseNet monitored countries. Jibo municipality in Sum province particularly faces um, a risk of famine. So while the seasonal availability of wild foods and um, opportunities to garden along the accessible accessible portions of the Jibo Dam have marginally improved food access. The situation in Jibo generally remains extremely critical and uh, with high levels of acute malnutrition and extreme acid depletion. Um, based on this, we do expect, ooh, sorry, um, emergency or IPC phase four outcomes in parts of uh, Burkina Faso, particularly Sum, Yaga, and Udalan provinces. We also expect emergency outcomes in Northeast Nigeria in the worst affected, um, worst conflict affected LGAs or local government areas in Borno State, um, including Abadam, Guzamala, Marte, and Bama. Uh, these areas continue to face severely limited access to livelihoods, minimal to no functional markets, asset liquidation, and heavily depleted coping capacity over several years of protracted conflict. Um, then we expect to see crisis or IPC phase three outcomes in several areas of the region, as you can see on the map. The areas of greatest concern remain the Liptako Borma region of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, the Lake Chad Basin um, spanning um, Northeast Nigeria and parts of um, Cameroon is already circled, and then also the northwest and north central uh, Nigeria, or sorry, yeah, northwestern and north central Nigeria. And then lastly, the areas of Chad hosting Sudanese refugees. These outcomes are largely driven by conflict, as I've been discussing, um, where we're seeing sustained disruptions in income generation, theft of assets or food stocks and atypically high uh, staple food prices even through the post-harvest period. Then overall across most of the non-conflict affected areas in the region, households are gaining income in food stocks right now with the ongoing harvests and in agro-pastoral areas, pasture conditions remain largely favorable with the um, August and September rains particularly. The areas in stress are typically the agro-pastoral and agricultural areas that still have some conflict partially disrupting the livelihood activities, including um, disruption of some planting, some movement restrictions, and or um, migration routes for livestock redirected due to either conflict or closed borders, um, limiting access to resources for those livestock. Um, moving on. So lastly, FuseNet generally prepares approximated humanitarian food assistance needs estimates for the countries it monitors. The graph here shows, or graphic here shows, estimated needs in the Sahel, particularly from June 2023 um, to March 2024. So as you can see in the trends, estimated humanitarian needs peaked in June to the June to September period around 20 to 25 million people. Um, this is expected to decrease seasonally in line with the harvest, particularly between October and January, um, before it'll start inclining again or increasing again with um, the exhaustion of stocks and increased food prices again. So as reiterated through the presentation, El Nino has not actually impacted our estimated food assistance needs in West Africa. Um, the approximated needs though do continue to be highest in Nigeria as, um, as has been consistent over the last several years, largely due to the relative size of the population and the magnitude of conflict there. But um, when I, as I noted in the outcomes slide, ultimately we are still concerned highly about Burkina Faso, Niger and Cameroon um, populations in need. And then, um, starting in late uh, late October, we'll be developing year-long needs estimates for the upcoming fiscal year, which will provide peak needs estimates for the 2024 period in West Africa. Um, so that wraps it up on my side. I am thinking we can now open it up for questions, but Phil, I'll hand it back over to you. Yes, thank you. On behalf of the FuseNet management team, I'd like to give a big 
Shout out to Al Khalil and Anu for this presentation, and a special thanks to Al Khalil for his perseverance. We're so glad you could get reconnected to continue the briefing. With that, I will give me a moment to end the recording, and then we'll move to questions and answers. Thank you. <laughs>